everybody. This is Davide Palessi, the multimedia editor of IDWC software, calling from uh, San Luis Obispo in California. And today we introduce the uh, March, April IDWC software special issues on release engineering. And today we have two guest editors, Bram Adams and Futse Com. And they are both assistant professors at uh, Ecole Polytechnique de Montreal. Hello, Bram. Hi, Putsi. How are you? Hi. Great. Very good. So uh, the first question is, uh, what is release engineering and how would you define it? Futs, do you want to say anything about this? Okay. So uh, what I can say is release engineering typically deal with all activities that takes place during the development of the software until the release to the customer. So that includes after the development is complete, you have to build the software, you have to test it, you have to deploy. Then you have to put in place release pipe to ship new releases to the customer. And those activities around maintenance of this pipe, it's basically what, uh, what it's about. Maybe Brown want to supplement something around. Yeah, so so that's true. Yeah, so basically, you're it's really about building the the pipeline to release the software instead of actually developing the source code. So this means there's lots of automation involved, like automating the build, the packaging, tests, certification, deployment, all these kind of things. But also lots of uh, human human interaction because the um, release engineers basically they are kind of guiding, coaching uh, the rest of the team, the developers, the testers, because they all need to go to the, the same goal, basically shipping a, a product of high quality on time to the user. Okay. So, Futs, why yep. do you think uh, uh, release engineering is interesting? Well, first, I think it's essential because if you can ship the product, well, you can make money, right? So release engineers, they are really at the head of the activities. So they are the one making sure that everything builds, that everything is integrated, that we can deliver, ship the product to customers, that we ship product with in decent health. So it's kind of essential activities. And with the growing complexity of software nowadays, they have to deal with a lot of dependency issues that require quite some sophisticated automation. And they have to have a very good understanding of all the components of, of the systems to be able to put in place a very good pipeline that okay. it can monitor. So I think it's, uh, for the industry part, it's very essential to ensure that you can improve your productivity, that you can ship in time, and then you can ensure a decent quality of service for your product. Mm -hmm. and on the research perspective, there mm -hmm. are also quite some interesting opportunities there because Putting in place this pipe dealing with all these dependency issues raise some important questions that researchers actually can contribute with the knowledge that have been built for solving some similar problems in different fields. So I, I think in that regard, it's both in interesting for practitioners and also for researchers who find, can find an opportunity there to, to kind of contribute their knowledge to solve some very practical problem to improve the productivity in the field. Mm -hmm. So, Bram, why do you think readers need to be aware of what's going on regarding release engineering? Well, so there are different kinds of readers. So basically, the IEEE software has, like, uh, like let's say, three main groups of, of readers. Like you have, the on one hand, the practitioners, then you have the researchers, and you also have the uh, the teachers like who uh, mm -hmm. teach to, to students. So, for example, for the practitioners, uh, for them it's important to, to be aware of this topic because uh, for example, the uh, the business side of things, like managers, they are looking at these big companies who are moving towards rapid release and, and all this continuous delivery, and they, they they want to go there as well, but they don't know how, and they're a bit afraid. They have afraid of the risk. They have questions about is it feasible, how much time, how many resources. So for them, it's this specialist is important to have some uh, how to say success stories and also maybe failures to learn from those experiences. Um, on the other hand, you also have the technical people, the technical practitioners. They as well, they want to know what are the tricks, what are the the, uh, the, uh, the approaches, the methodologies to use in, in, uh, concretely 
to go to, for example, continuous delivery. So practitioners in general, for them, it's very uh, uh, important to be aware of this. Researchers as well, as Foods was mentioning, um, because some of them are already studying certain topics that are of interest to release engineering, but they might not be aware of the bigger picture. Or maybe mm -hmm. they, they want to jump in and they also want to do some research on the topic, but they're not really uh, familiar with, with everything. Uh, so for them, it's also important. And finally, there's the teachers. It's like, it, it's all well that, that many companies are now going to this rapid release, but you need to educate as well the new people the, the, the who are now like um, following classes because they need to be prepared for a, for a world where you have rapid release and continuous delivery. So for them as well, this is uh, uh, very important uh, to be aware of. Mm -hmm. So, Foots, do you want to add something or do you think it's fine? Well, just maybe to complement, I think now that the, mm -hmm. the topic is maturing and we, we're moving toward putting in place some best practice, right? Some. Some companies are kind of now more sharing what they have been putting in place to solve some of those race engineering issues. And and the good thing is that the, the newcomers, the new companies coming to the field can just benefit, can benefit from these best practices. They know what are the patterns that, that works, what are anti-patterns to avoid. Uh, for example, if you look at mobile apps, race engineering, some, some big companies are sharing some pretty good insights that they have been doing, and then I think the community can really benefit from from those. So. Mm -hmm. Very good. So the last question is for Bram, and it is uh, why is Azure Software uh, covering this topic now? I mean, what makes uh, this topic especially timely? Well, very interesting question because so how things got this far was basically because we uh, in 2013. We uh, started to organize the um, uh, international uh, workshop on uh, uh, lead engineering, and mm -hmm. we, we, to our surprise, we actually was a very popular workshop. We got like 84 people the first edition. We, uh, wow! Okay, uh, that's, that, that's a big the, number for a computer science uh, workshop. Exactly, exactly. So we were also a bit surprised, and, and especially in this big number, what what was surprising is the the huge proportion of industry. I think. 75% uh, or, or at least 70 was like from industry, which is also quite uh -huh. rare at an academic uh, uh, conference. So, so this we had a second edition, which was at the Google campus. We had like 100 people there, and so out of this grade came the idea. Basically, let's let's try to to consolidate all these knowledge, all these ideas, into a special issue, basically. And um, this is how the special issue uh, came to life. So basically, the topic is really live. Uh, among people and especially industry, and we noticed that in the workshops and also in the special issue that the companies are really uh, open about their problems, about the, their solutions, about their use mm -hmm. of uh, uh, open source technology in, in solving their release engineering problems. They really want to tell about their experiences, they want to share. So that's another kind of thing that, that, uh, uh, that helped actually um, with this uh, special issue. And through all this, basically, yeah, I guess it's very really timely because now is the time where the big companies have make have made lots of progress, and now with the smaller ones and the startups who who really want to now pick these things up and they want to know what should we do, what are the concrete things we can do, and they want to learn. And for example, mobile app companies, all these small uh, startups. So this is why it's very timely now uh, this topic. And I think it, it all boils down to what Foods was saying as well is actually. We need to come up with, with best practices for the field. And I think this special issue could be like a very first step to really nail down these uh, best practices. Great. So I think the next step is just to, to read the uh, upcoming uh, March and April uh, at the Blues of the Special Issue, where there will be uh, an introduction to it, which uh, has been made by all the guest editors, and then a set of papers that are very relevant about this topic. So I really thank uh, Bram and Futsi for their uh, discussion and introduction to the special issue. Thank you, guys. Yep, thank you. And uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye.